Hi, I'm Terry Brock with terrybrock.com, reporting for business journals. We know that bandwidth today is really important. The more you can get, the better, and sometimes it's just excruciating when you can't get it when you're out in a remote location. Well, that's where 4G and LTE come in. Now, these are some terms that sometimes might seem a little bit odd and where are we going with it, but you've got an opportunity now to hear from the person that knows about this. I talked with Chris Pearson. He is the president of 4G Americas, and he is a person that heads up What's going on? The kind of ideas and people that are together learning about and exploring and making new ideas happen in the 4G and the LTE world and where we're going for, get this, 5G, which is on its way. Find out about that and more in this interview I have with Chris Pearson of America's 4G's, 4G Americas. He's a person that knows what he's talking about and you want to listen to this. For today's mobile professionals, speed and bandwidth are critical. Today, we want to get the fastest speed possible wherever we go. It doesn't always happen, but it is getting better all the time. Right now, we're using 4G in many places around the United States, and we're headed for something even better. And we're going to tell you about that today because joining me right now is a person who knows about this really well. His name is Chris Pearson, and he's the president of 4G Americas. Chris, thanks for being with us today. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me today. Well, you're in a field that is so exciting. And I mean, the more bandwidth we can get, the better. I mean, right now we're getting speed, some like, uh, you know, three, five megabits, 10 megabits, some places uh, wirelessly. And of course, when we get wired, we can get a little bit faster. What I want is like five, I want like 999 terabits uh, up and download. Can you get that for me, Chris? Uh, no, that's going to be really tough to get for you. Yeah, sure. it'll be tough. Well, tell me, where I'm are we today? Especially, or even, even, even wired would be tough at this point. Yeah, it would right now. I'm thinking, you know, I want that. Now, maybe by 2030 or 2040 or something we might. But uh, tell me where we are today in the United States with uh, 4G and how, uh, per, how uh, predominant is that? And uh, what do we ha what's the state of uh, wireless today in the U.S.? Well, the, the state of wireless uh, in the United States today is, is in a terrific spot. Uh, we actually are a leader when it comes to 4G LTE networks uh, as far as coverage, speeds, the amount of smartphones being used. So when you look at uh, an LTE, the, the major national carriers, they're pretty much covering most all of the United States of America. Um, and we are really looked upon from the rest of the world as a leader in the 4G space. Great. Yeah, we're doing a lot. We see, but what I'm looking for is getting up to Korea level. Now, if we can get up to Korea level, because they are known as some of the fastest in the world, it'd be really nice. But uh, we're using some terms there that a lot of people might not understand. And I want to hear it directly from you. Tell us what's the difference between 4G and, say, 3G, which was before that, and then LTE. We keep hearing these three letters, LTE. Kind of help us on that. Tell us what those mean practically from a business point of view. Yeah, from a business uh, st standpoint, I mean, 3G is a great technology, and it's been in the United States and the rest of the world for a long time. In fact, it's still um, a world leader as far as mobile broadband technologies. But um, what happened when we went to uh, 4G is we Im increased the speeds, and we also uh, created what would basically be considered a, a, an IP, all IP network. So that's when, when you start talking about 4G, that's when LTE came into place. And what does that mean? What does that stand for? Uh, long-term evolution. Uh, and so when with long-term evolution, you just basically saw an improvement in speeds, um, what's called lower latency, which is basically um, when you want a web page to load, for instance, it would load faster because of the low latency. And then uh, as we, you know, uh, progress from LTE, we actually moved to something called LTE Advanced. But LTE stands for long-term evolution. Obviously, advanced uh, just means it's, again, another improvement. And we've already seen uh, United States carriers uh, or wireless operators deploy LTE Advanced as well. So we're seeing, uh, you know, it's a great industry because we're always seeing improvements that are helping out the business customer. Okay, very good. Well, now also we know there's numbers attached to that on uh, megabits per second and uh, we up and down, particularly we start doing video like we're doing here. You and I are using uh, Zoom to be able to yeah. do this. And so having really good, strong bandwidth both up and down is really important. Tell us what kind of speeds we're talking about when we use terms like 3G, what kind of range are we there? And then 4G and LTE and the difference between 4G and LTE. Sometimes that's a little confusing. I know there's a few yeah. things in there. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so, you know, realistically, you're starting to, it, it all depends on how congested your network is uh, and when you're at a sales site. But in general, 
um, what you'd be looking for uh, is for um, an HSP, or excuse me, a 3G network would be uh, you know one to five megabits per second on the on the download speed, and then when you move to like LTE, it could be up to you know five to twelve megabits per second. Um, so you're you're seeing some increase in in the types of uh, you know download speeds that you're capable of, but there are different techniques to each technology that allow you to actually supercharge either of them. So even even 3G technologies can even have higher speeds, and LTE has a lots of technical features that are left on the table, and we're starting to see deployed that will increase them. Um, you know, so both technologies uh, are, are are really mobile broadband technologies, and from a user standpoint, both very good technologies to use. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds interesting. So with LTE, are we looking at a maximum, best case scenario, around 12 megabits per second up and down? Yeah, when you look at uh, most of the, 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 the operators, and again, depends on the congestion and things, but you could look at, yeah, uh, under very good conditions, uh, up to 12 megabits per second. But the range is very high, uh, you know, uh, very varied, I should say, uh, anywhere from 5 to 12 megabits per second. Ah, okay. Now, I know over in countries, I mentioned Korea, like Korea, Finland, uh, over in Europe in some places, it is much faster. What kind of speeds are they getting over there? Let's say Korea, for example. Uh, in, in many cases, they're, it's, it's very similar, actually. Um, they would be in the 5 to 12 megabits per second. It depends on the congestion in their, their network and then what advanced features that they've, they've deployed from LTE advanced. So, for instance, uh, you know, many uh, of the, the studies that, that, that they have in South Korea that show the higher speeds, Part of it is because the wireless network um, is is has deployed a lot of the features of LTE Advance, but also it's because they actually have a, a very good back backbone for a backhaul, which would be a fiber backhaul. Which in the United States, uh, we are actually seeing that that same uh, trend here in the United States. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, now we know there's another one out there called 5G and it's yes. going to be the next one. And we're all going, yes, you know, the, those of us that are kind of nerdy like me, you know, we, we want really, really fast. I'm waiting for my 900 terabit download and upload speed. I don't think we're quite there, but uh, tell me what kind of speeds are we looking at with 5G and tell me approximately when we can expect to have something like that in reality. Oh, yeah, so when we, right now the um, we're in the very beginning stages of 5G, and so when you start to look at speeds, um, it's really about the use cases around what you might want at, at, at for 5G. And so speeds uh, could be any, you know, basically are in the gigabits uh, per second. Mm. But that would be only in certain situations and, and so forth, because a lot of uh, you know 5G, it's there's three main use cases. Families. One is enhanced mobile broadband, which means you get mobile broadband anywhere, anytime, any device. The second area is what's called critical low latency communications. So things where you're always connected to the network and it's critical. You can think of a, a driverless car in the future. It's going to be need both critical low latency communications and it's going to take enhanced mobile broadband to run everything in that car. And then finally, it's the, the third use case it, for 5G is a massive internet of things, meaning everything begins to, to, begins to be connected. Uh, but from a speed standpoint, you know, you're looking at you know, one, you know, the gigabits per second on up, and then as far as the timeline, we can get into that discussion if you want me to. Yeah, yeah, the timeline is of something we're always interested in. Like, we want it yesterday. And yeah. uh, so, you know, actually, I would just want 5G everywhere I'm going to be. So you need uh -huh. to track that. And everywhere I am, anywhere in the yeah. world, Chris, I'm putting you in charge of making sure that I get 5 or 6G. That would be nice. But what yeah. kind of a realistic time frame, though, are we looking at for it? So you're seeing a lot of announcements and hype around 5G right now. But if you want to get down to the nitty-gritty uh, when it's going to be available. You're re really looking at 2020 and beyond as a kind of a pragmatic or practical deployment schedule for what would be considered commercial standardized deployments, meaning that it's, it's something that the ecosystem can grow from and will have products that are standardized versus proprietary. You okay, take and me and me without my DeLorean time machine right now to uh, head up there to, to get that. So you say 2020 and beyond will be about when we start seeing it really starting uh, fully deployed. Yeah, well, just starting to see commercial standardized deployments. The actual standards for the technology, 5G technology, there's going to be two phases. The first phase will be completed in the second half of 2018. And then the second phase will be uh, in December of 2019. 
So those are the phases, two phases for the standards. So then to get commercial products from there, it takes a couple of years. So again, that's why you say second, second half of 2018, two years gets you to, to 2020. Ah, okay. So we're really looking at 2021, 2022, somewhere in there that we'll start seeing it emerging even more. Although, as we know with technology, something new could come along and uh, go even different. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and you probably will see, you, you will see in some parts of the world, some what would probably be considered pre-standardized, uh, you know, deployments. And that's, you know, typically driven by governments or events uh, that are taking place. So for instance, when you look at the 2018 and 2020 Olympics that are going to be in the Asia Pacific region and in, in, uh, in Korea and Japan, um, you're seeing that, that you know, they are uh, trying to move toward that for some pre-standardized deployments uh, of 5G technology. Yeah, that makes sense. And I want to go back to something you talked about earlier, the Internet of Things and how that's going to be deployed, particularly where we hear about autonomous cars and cars that are going to be fully automated and connected. It seems like, yeah, we're going to have to have that. Tell me about the practical applications of what we're going to be able to do in a world that has really strong 5G. Let's roll it ahead maybe to 2025. So we've got 5G reasonably should be working well, cars moving on. Tell me what the world will look like then as best we can see it from here uh, where we are. Yeah. Well, I think when you start looking at 2020, it will be a combination of everything that you're going to be able to do with 4G LTE and then starting to see the layers of what you can do with 5G. But if you can start to think of everything in your life, if you look around your home, you look around your car, you, you drive down the street and you see a street light, all of these types of items will be connected so that if, if someone, as, a, as an example, a smart city, you can save... Uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, depending on the size of your city, by starting to use uh, LED lighting with modules that will basically let uh, uh, that light be smart. Uh, when should it be dim? When should it be uh, more brighter? When should it be off? When should it be on? And you start seeing these things all connected. And you're, the vision of 2020 and beyond will be not only about 5G, but what 4G is able to do with connecting everything in our lives and making everything much smarter. Mm, yeah, the Internet of Things, that IoT that we hear so much about, seems like it is really integrally wound together with 4G and 5G and uh, the deployment of all of that. Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's one of the key areas that we at 4G Americas emphasize is that you know, our industry moves forward at a very fast pace. And we know that everyone wants to talk about 5G in 2020 and beyond, but there are um, some great developments in the standardized process processes that are happening right now that are going to allow for you know much better um, Internet of Things technology from the cellular carriers and cellular vendors. So we're going to be looking to connect everything, and we're not necessarily going to wait for 5G. Although again, 5G will be layered in to the overall solution. Yeah, I think to me, to me, it's amazing what we can do even right now, today. I mean, for instance, here I've got my uh, my iPhone. This is my iPhone six plus, yep. and it's uh, the older version right now, but it is still there. It's wonderful. I get it, and I can with the plan that I have. I sit down, I can watch streaming movies on there, no hiccups, and it works beautifully on four G. And yep. I think that is really nice. And also, I have unlimited data with the plan that I have, my particular carrier, no throttling, unlimited data, and I'm able to uh, just sit there. I said, wait a minute. I called them up and I said, well, does that mean I could watch YouTube videos like 24 hours a day, seven days a week with no charge and no throttling? They said, that is correct, Terry. You would yeah. not have to worry about it. I think it's amazing what we have with the 4G and the kinds of applications we have, and it seems like uh, only going to get better and better in the future. What do you think? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the, um, the demand for our product, if you look at a global perspective, uh, we're growing at, as far as mobile broadband data demand, at 57% per year uh, on an aggregate basis. So the world is wanting more and more data, and they're just like you. You want more data, more of the time, on more devices. And it's a and great- faster. <laughs> and faster, yeah. So it's both a great opportunity for our industry because how many industries are growing with a demand like that, but it's also a great challenge for us because there truly is the, the physics that are involved in utilizing radio spectrum to deliver our services to the marketplace. Yeah, well, you're, one thing nice about it, Chris, in your job, you will not get bored. 
because it's uh, <laughs> always moving and you just have to run a little bit faster. Any final words you want to leave as a, to those that are watching this uh, that are uh, wondering, okay, how's this going to help me as a business person? I'm out there, I'm selling or I'm running a business. I got uh, tasks to do both for business, but also on the personal side. Uh, what kind of uh, world can they look forward to in the next few years? And uh, how does 4G and LTE factor into that? Well, I, I think the thing that I would think about is when I speak at conferences around the world and I take questions and I, and I talk to lots of executives, and we used to talk about you know, various strategies that they might have in their businesses. And you used to hear about, well, there's the internet strategy, and then there's the social media strategy. Well, now I really believe that, well, you need to have a mobile broadband wireless strategy because the, our industry is changing how things are done in other industries, whether it's telemedicine, whether it's education, whether it's anything out there, even connected cars. You know, when you drive a car, it's a lot different now when you can be connected to the internet at any time. So what I think that most business people should be looking at is not only how it helps you while you're a traveler on the road or something like that, but your business is gonna be transformed or could be transformed over the next five years through the fact that mobile broadband wireless is going to be connecting everything and anything, and you should have a strategy behind it. Absolutely. Very good words of advice for us. Well, Chris, thank you very much. And before we uh, let you go, I'm not going to let you get out of here without telling us how we can get in touch with you. Someone says, hey, I want to find out more about uh, 4G's America, and I want to find out the kind of thing that you're doing and how they can get in touch with you. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, the best way is um, to go to our website. It's, it's uh, www or gamericas.org, O-R-G. And you have lots of information about uh, our organization, our staff, and, and even uh, uh, information on each of us. So. Great. Very good. So that's 4gamericas.org for those of you listening on audio. And uh, it's got a lot of good information that you can use and start building that into your business, implementing it and making sure it's working. Chris, thank you very much for joining us. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. And thank you, dear viewer, for watching us. I'm Terry Brock for Business Journals, and look forward to seeing you in the future.